Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear friends, welcome back. So, in our previous lecture, we have solved uh, the takeoff performance of a delta wing UAV. Uh, yeah. So, we have what we did is we developed a subroutine that estimates the power requirement by this uh, UAV to take off uh, from a yeah from a location or a runway which is located at about one kilometer with respect to mean sea level. Now we know what is the power requirement during takeoff, right? And we earlier we have also solved the problem for power requirement during cruise. Now we will try to solve for the power requirement during climb condition. So that we will understand okay, what is the typical power requirement for this aircraft to perform a particular mission. Right? Apart from this cruise, if you say if you want to loiter for some time, right? So what will be the apart from flying at a particular velocity for a given endurance, what will be the corresponding power required? We'll see aspect we'll solve as we progress. So, for the time being, we are going to solve this climb performance, what is the power requirement, so that this, the details about this power requirement will help us to understand. So, with these details, we will be able to understand the corresponding specifications or the kind of power plan that we need to select. So, now, let us take up a problem, yeah, same problem almost. So, instead of, yeah, it's this, so, example. Consider the UAV in the above example or say in our previous example example and estimate Estimate the power required by the system, not by the UAV, to perform climb at a climb rate of. Five meters per second. Okay. So, for us, uh, this data is inadequate, isn't it? So, just before proceeding this to this particular uh, uh, subroutine development, we'll have a quick look at the dynamics uh, that we have discussed earlier for climb performance. say this aircraft is moving at a forward velocity v infinity right is said to be inclined with a climb angle gamma so let us assume a steady climb in this case so where the thrust is acting in the direction of flight and drag is acting opposite to the direction of flight and there is lift perpendicular to flight velocity and the weight of the aircraft is acting vertically downward here right so the dynamic conditions here are T minus D minus W sin gamma is 0, right. Since we are considering a steady climb here, so L minus W cos gamma is 0. So that means the load factor N, which is L upon W, is cos gamma. Okay. So during climbing flight, I require less weight, less lift compared to that of level flight. I require to generate a lift which is adequate to overcome a component of weight which is W cos gamma, right. So, so W cos gamma will be 
balanced by this lift. So, W cos gamma. So, W sin gamma is balanced by the engine here. So, we are loading engine more in case of climb, right. So, W sin gamma will be acting opposite to the direction of flight. So, which we need to satisfy that means the thrust required by the system is drag apart from drag you also have a component of weight right which is W sin gamma right. Higher the value of gamma greater is this particular component W sin gamma. So, now if this this condition has to be satisfied by the engine here right that means we should make this thrust available to the system to overcome the drag as well as to carry the weight a component of weight in the direction of flight right. So, now the power required by this system is thrust required times the V infinity. So, the thrust required here for climb I will say the bracket C talks about climb because we also discussed TR for level flight as well. So, TR in bracket C talks about climb. So, the thrust required during climb should be right. So, the, the drag plus W sin gamma. So, this is equals to drag times V infinity plus W sin gamma times V infinity. So, I need to know this particular value. If I have to solve this above example, I need to know what is the power required uh, or say this is the power required by the system. What should be the power available by the system? This power shaft power that need to be generated by this engine. So, which we discussed earlier right is not it. So, the shaft power here that we need to generate right. Uh, sorry. So, this is for electrical efficiency right. So, the shaft otherwise the efficiency propulsive efficiency eta p is equals to power available upon shaft power right. So, with the help of this propeller we are converting the available shaft power or shaft power from the brushless motor or the engine right to the available power that helps the aircraft to move forward. So, this is power available the output from this propeller and brushless motor combination. So, the output is power available upon shaft power is the propulsive efficiency. So, if I want to know what should be the shaft power ultimately the engine delivers shaft power right. So, if I need to know what is this shaft power that the engine has to deliver is equals to power available upon propulsive efficiency right. This is what we need to ultimately figure it out. So, here the shaft power that I need to generate is equals to. So, this should be the power available to move at this particular flight velocity as well as at this particular gamma right. So, if you can notice here see this power drag times velocity is nothing but power required in level flight is not it power required in level flight. So, in level flight we just require our engine to deliver this particular power required to fly at this particular velocity. But in case of climbing flight we apart from this power required what we need is additional uh, power that carries a component of weight at a desired climb velocity or forward velocity that helps you to climb right. So, now the shaft power P s h is that the engine has to deliver or make available for the propeller or the aircraft is power available or the power required by the system upon shaft uh, propeller efficiency right. So, from the above step let us say if you consider. So, yeah this has uh, so, this is like second step and this is like so because from step 3 we will be able to find out what is a power required or the power available that need to be made available by the propeller power plant for the aircraft to fly at this particular velocity v infinity. Now, in this particular question we were given the data about rate of climb right the r by c stands for rate of climb or you can also say r o c rate of climb. So, I, I would like to use both the you know, norm, nomenclatures. So, both of these as a nomenclature to represent rate of climb which is given as 5 meters per second. That means, the vertical component of velocity h dot is equals to v sin gamma here right. This vertical component of velocity is v infinity sin gamma and the horizontal component of velocity is v infinity cos gamma right. For example, so at time t is equals to 0 this say this is like t 1 the time at which the climb is initiated and then after a time t 2 uh, say t is equals to t 2. So, it has climbed to an altitude h f right let it let it be h 2 
and h1 be the initial altitude at which the climb is initiated right it can be zero so the total change in the vertical distance is h2 upon h1 right this is h2 minus h1 upon t2 minus t1 that is h dot here that's a vertical component of velocity when you are climbing at particular gamma you also cover a horizontal distance which is x dot say this is like at t is equals to t1 you are at x1 and at t is equals to t2 you are on the ground you are at x2 so this h and x are with respect to a frame with that is fixed on the ground we call it as inertial frame here so this is nothing but x2 minus x1 upon t2 minus t1 right so this is equals to v infinity cos gamma fine now say you are given the information about rate of climb r by c so can we directly use that rate of climb to find out what is the power required so one way to do that is so from this equation from the above equation so this is power required for climb prc here right so now this pr stands for power required for level flight well let us keep the same flavor of this pr uh, that is uh, uh, that we used it for you know level flight condition so the power available from this equation uh, which was presented in step 3 power available minus power required will helps you to like the difference between that power available minus power required which is power required is drag into velocity which is a level flight power requirement right is will help you to propel this aircraft forward by taking a component of weight at a but velocity v infinity right so this v infinity sin gamma from here is power available minus power required upon gamma uh, upon w called the difference between pa and pr is the excess power and when divided by w we call it as specific excess power so this rate of climb h dot so given h dot is equals to p a minus p r upon w so the power that need to be made available is depends upon h dot times w plus power required right isn't it power required is drag into velocity given h dot here and you know the weight of the aircraft if you know the drag right the p r you will be able to find out what is p a so this p r is nothing but drag into velocity again so here d is again a function of cl here now isn't it so d is again a function of cl and cl depends upon gamma to find out cl you need to know what is gamma that means it's not a straight forward approach you need to consider different values of gamma and see for a, for the same rate of climb how the power requirement is varying now say you can also have a iterative approach in terms of like instead of fixing this rate of climb at 5 meters per second you can also iterate rate of climb for different at each and every rate of climb you can vary the value of gamma and see what is the corresponding yeah power required by the system and also what will be the forward velocity that results in right so we'll try to figure out all this aspects so let us follow this step by step approach so approach so so first consider a rate of climb r by c or r by c right for this rate of climb and vary gamma right so for a particular rate of climb vary gamma from here for each and every gamma for each r by c and gamma find v infinity which is forward velocity right that's what we just discussed so this is a forward velocity that we are talking here so find this forward velocity with the input of rate of climb r was c right rate of climb and so this d h dot is rate of climb right this is r was c okay or r by c you can say so find the input of rate of climb and gamma find out what is v infinity forward flight velocity here in the climb right and then so you know gamma and you know v infinity for this particular case that means so the approach that we are adopting stands for a particular r by c right the single value of r by c and you can iterate the entire procedure you can repeat the entire uh, exercise for different rate of climb so r by c and gamma find v infinity and now 
find C L for given V infinity and gamma, right. So, this corresponds to again for, for this particular rate of climb. So, once you have this C L, you find out what is, so find or say calculate C D, right, which is C D naught plus K C L square using drag polar. Once you know C D, so find the thrust required during climb which is drag times velocity plus W sin gamma, right sorry drag, drag plus W sin gamma here, right. So, now you can find out once you have that find power required during climb. So, the power required is equals to during climb ok should be equal to thrust required during climb times v infinity corresponding forward velocity of flight during that climb right. So, this you have estimated from step 5. So, which is nothing but power required for climb is power required during cruise which is drag times velocity plus w sin gamma times v infinity. So, this anyway you will get it from this step, step 5. So, now you can also find out what is the time, right. You know what is the climb angle and you know what is this. You can find out what is the say how much time to take, uh, time taken to climb a particular altitude. Otherwise, within a specified time, what is the distance it can travel? Because it is a study climb we are talking about, right. You know H1 and H2, and you know what is a H dot, you know rate of climb, and you know what is H2 minus H1 upon delta t. So, this constant velocity of climb, so which is nothing but V infinity sin gamma, you know what is V infinity and gamma, right. So, from here you will be able to find out with it. So, within a particular time interval you will be able to find out what is the height th that this aircraft achieved right. How much within say or say to climb a particular altitude what should be the corresponding height uh, what you called uh, time required. So, that means, H 2 minus H 1 is given you will be able to find out what is the corresponding time. Let us consider uh, let us add some more uh, to this question time of rate of climb to climb an altitude of Say. So, this is pretty much straightforward, no? there is not much uh, much exciting thing involved with this so, 1000 meters. Okay. So, which is like how much time it takes to climb this particular altitude okay. that is V infinity sin gamma. So, we so the time taken delta t is equals to so delta h let us say if you are climbing from sea level to uh, 1000 kilometers, uh, so 1000 meters or the problem is already right uh, delta h to be 1000 say it is already starting from 1000 msl. So, let us make it 2000 msl here ok, 2000 msl. So, another important aspect that we need to consider is the drag here right is not it. So, the drag you are calculating it from half rho v square s times c d right. So, as the altitude changes here your density also changing is not it. So, assuming you are flying at a constant velocity throughout you have to consider the change in density as well. So, earlier we have come up with a sub protein where with the input of altitude you will be able to find out what is the corresponding yeah density right. So, we will use that sub protein in this to find out drag at each and every altitude when you are flying at a particular velocity and at a forward velocity and at particular climb angle ok. So, this is delta h upon uh, v infinity or rate of climb right v infinity sin gamma ok. Similarly, you can find out so what will be the uh, horizontal distance that you can travel which is uh, x dot is uh, v infinity cos gamma. 
So, since see ideally it has to be a numerical integration, but we are considering a constant velocity of light. So, we can uh, like uh, use a direct, uh, you can use uh, delta t directly to figure out what is the corresponding distance travelled, right. So, corresponding distance travelled, horizontal distance travelled in this time, right, is v infinity cos gamma times t. So, delta x or the rain, horizontal distance covered is v infinity cos gamma times delta t. So, delta t you get it from the previous step, step number 7 and with step 8 you will be able to find out what is the corresponding horizontal distance travel. So, these are the parameters that we are going to plot right uh, for various climb angles right. So, we have to make a subroutine. So, this was our previous question performance takeoff performance subroutine right. So, I would like to uh, yeah, take a new code here. I am clearing the memory of this uh, MATLAB compiler and then I am closing say if there are any figures or some uh, uh, so windows which were opened because of the previous code they all will be closed and then CLC stands for clearing the screen of the uh, command window. For example, if I write something here, if I then say CLC will actually clean this command window, clear screen, right. So, the now uh, since we are talking about the same UAV uh, earlier, so I would like to input the geometric as well as aerodynamic data from my previous code here, right. So, I have just copied the input geometric data right where the mass of the UAV is 3.5 kg. So, the weight is now uh, obtained by multiplying the mass with g which is considered as 10 meter per second square and the span was given as 1.5 meters with a root chord of 0 0.9 meters and a tip chord of 0 0.15 meters. So, we end up having a taper ratio of about say 0 0.167 and the area of this platform as per the geometry based upon this root chord span and the tip chord with the taper ratio, we will be able to figure out what is uh, the area which is uh, which is which turned out to be 0 0.787 meter square and the aspect ratio here is b square upon s. So, yeah, so the uh, yeah which is about 2.86 uh, and Oswald's efficiency is given as an input 0 0.89 and w wing loading is estimated here right. So, apart from that, so I am just explaining what are all involved here. Okay. So, now apart from that we also considered the aerodynamic uh, data which with uh, C L naught as 0 0.06 and C L alpha of this delta wing UAV is 2.992 close to 3 per radian here again yeah. better to mention it is uh, per radian. So, C D naught is 0 0.03 and induced drag correction factor can be calculated using this uh, expression and we also have propulsor, propeller efficiency which is 0 0.95, right. We require propeller ef efficiency, is not it? So, in order to calc in order to find out what is uh, yeah, what is shaft power that need to deliver. So, we need to talk uh, we need this propeller efficiency as an input here, ok. So, now what we need to do is to consider the climb parameters right. So, what we want to vary here. So, rate of climb I would like to vary let us say rate of climb. So, r underscore c here I would like to vary initially the rate of climb. So, that is our first step right for a rate of climb is equals to. So, varying from say I would like to vary it from 1 meter per second to uh, with an inc interval of 1 meter per second again to say what? to 7 meters per second let us say rate of climb. So, we were asked to find out it yeah the question was to figure out rate of climb right no not rate of climb what is the power required when you are uh, climbing at 5 meters per second like uh, with a vertical velocity of 5 meters per second. But here uh, we are not just limiting our approach for 5 meters per second vertical velocity of 5 meters per second it, uh, instead we are now iterating from 1 meter per second of vertical velocity to 7 meters per second. You can increase this just uh, I just thought like this will be useful for you when you are right and you want to change these parameters. So, that is the reason why I am 
uh, including it here. So, let us say j v is the variable of uh, this particular iteration for rate of climb and I would like to consider another variable i for this uh, as a variable in this integration. Uh, not integration I'm sorry variable for this iterations here right so j is now incre increasing right whenever there is an increment in the rate of climb so initially it takes value of 1 so i would like to stay store this roc rate of climb as uh, j comma 1 so it's a vector column vector here So, rate of climb is equals to r underscore c, right. Now, so let us say for the first iteration it takes a single value of roc, right, that is 1 here. Now, once I considered rate of climb, so according to our uh, approach we need to vary gamma right is not it that is what it is here. So, we have to vary gamma here. So, this value has to be varied here. So, now to do that what I am uh, considering is another for loop because I need to vary it I need a loop here to vary that parameter. So, gamma so gamma is now varied from say 1 degree. So, otherwise f p I will I'll say uh, I will write it as flight path f p is varied from 1 degree to so it is in degrees I will convert it into radians. So, so 1 degree with an increment of uh, otherwise say 2 degree flight path angle with an increment of 2 degrees every time uh, it takes an increment of 2 say if starts with 2 degrees of uh, gamma then it will in the next iteration it will take 4 and 6 and so on till say will uh, say 20 degrees of gamma. So, we will have almost a, a 9 data points here right okay. mm. uh, including 2 it is like 20 I guess okay. including 2 it is uh, 10 data points we will have. So, and this flight path is varying. So, again as I mentioned I is a variable of uh, this uh, iterative approach for gamma where j is the variable for uh, ROC rate of climb I is for gamma here. And then I would like to convert gamma which was there to radians because MATLAB understands radian. So, the flight path angle which is in degrees is converted to radians by multiplying it by pi by 180. And now, I would like to store this values of gamma as well during the iterative process. So, it is like i comma j. So, it anyway is going to be constant. So, but still I would like to uh, store this for every k right. So, this will be like uh, this will be this will be like what is the size of f p size of f p cross size of r c. So, that will be that will how the matrix of gamma will be ok size of p cross uh, size of uh, r c. So, i comma j. So, the each and every column uh, corresponds to a particular rate of climb here. So, that is what it is j talks about rate of climb. So, j here x comma y in the sense here uh, i comma j j stands for each and each value of uh, a particular value of rate of climb you can say. So, this is equals to gamma. So, so, ideally all the columns has to be same because it is nothing but now we have fixed our steps of uh, uh, increment from 2 to 20 with a interval of 2. So, ideally uh, all the columns of this gamma capital right uh, GMA. So, it has to be same identical it will be anyways. So, uh, once you have gamma find with uh, for each r by c and gamma find v infinity right what will be the forward velocity of flight we have vertical velocity of flight which is rate of climb. Now, what will be the forward velocity of flight for this particular rate of climb? So, this equals to i comma j. So, i stands for different gamma what at for a particular 
So, V of i comma j stands for for different gamma that means i is varying inside this loop right the second for loop it is varying for the second for loop. So, let me close this. So, this will end the second for loop and we have the second for loop inside the first for loop right. So, now it makes sense right. So, this particular uh, sub uh, sub loop which is inside this uh, main for loop right. So, we will iterate for gamma. So, selected once we select a particular rate of climb. So, this second loop iterates for gamma here. So, that is what it is for a particular j value j value will not vary until you break this loop in until you break this for loop here the gamma until the gamma varies from 2 to 20 with a step of 2 this j value remains constant so once it, once it is done for the first time it will break this particular loop it will come out of this inner inner loop and it will like uh, again uh, check for the condition for the outer loop here once there is an increment in the rate of climb here the j value increases and hence the new again the gamma is again varied from 0 to 2 to 20 with an interval of 2 right now that those values will be stored in second column there right so i wish you might have already get uh, got used to this environment and then started using matlab as well so with that uh, what you call assumption i am proceeding to solve this so v of i comma j is equals to we have rate of climb upon sin gamma right so r underscore c upon sin of gamma which is g a m a here. So, gamma is already in radian. So, rate of climb is constant for a particular, uh, but gamma is continuously changing inside the loop and this is constant for this inner loop to be frank. So, for our when it comes to the outer loop r by c again changes when it once it uh, once the inner loop starts from here it will remain a con it will remain constant for that particular loop. Right, whereas gamma will be the variable of this loop here. So, we have velocity of climb and then thrust required if I am not wrong. So, calculate what is the C L for the given right V and gamma V infinity gamma. How can I do that? We have lift is equals to W cos gamma this is what I need to produce. So, C L is equals to 2 times w upon s. So, that is wing loading times cos gamma upon rho times v infinity square. So, we have v infinity and gamma and these details are given geometric details and density I need to find out at each and every altitude. right? So, when I have to find the density that means, I need to know what is the corresponding altitude of flight here. So, I need to give for the time being let us say we get it from here we will try to arrange that. So, density is also given as an input for the time being let us assume that. Okay. So, otherwise we need to solve this entire procedure in time domain. So, let us not do that for the time being. Okay. We will consider density as an input that is the density of the uh, density from which the uh, climb is initiated. So, from the, the density at the altitude from which the climb is initiated. So, we have that function. So, we have density function which was used earlier here, no, uh, take off was not, yeah input density, we have you already used this function. So, we consider the uh, initial altitude of cruise, so density, so we are confining this to the initial altitude which can be solved in the time domain, I wish you should take it, uh, take it as an assignment but just modifying the variables of the integration. So, so, z let us take z as an input here which is the enter the altitude of flight initial altitude of flight or altitude enter the altitude at which cruise is init initiated at which cruise sorry climb is initiated climb is in meters. So, this I am talking about performance not take off. So, we will type climb and of course, all these are meant for power plant selection. Okay. This entire exercise helps you to figure out what should be the power plant here. So, you have V rate of climb sin gamma and then you can find out what is a C L value here, C L of this flight is i comma j should be 
2 w upon w underscore s is already like considered here which is wing loading the which is w by s. So, the here we cannot give w upon s right we cannot use any mathematical operations to define a variable. So, w by s stands for w upon s wing loading here ok. So, w underscore s times cos gamma upon density times v v square v of i comma j square. So, from here I will be able to find out what is C L right the corresponding C D of this flight C D which is C D not given right C D not is given here using drag polar we can find out what is C D not is given k we have calculated. So, C D not plus k these are constants times C L is a variable again here depends upon flight velocity and gamma right and gamma is a variable and hence the flight velocity as well here because rate of climb is again a variable in this ok. C D is done now I will find out what is the drag it is good to find out what is the lift as well that is nothing but w cos gamma that is ok. So, instead of drag I will say uh, directly the power required instead of drag it is a or say thrust required k c l yeah, k c l square. So, the thrust required here is equals to so thrust required for cruise say so climb c l t r underscore c l st stands for climb thrust required for climb is drag right which is uh, half rho v square half rho v square times s times s is given half rho v square s c d c d of i comma j corresponds to that particular velocity and c l that C L of course, which which is uh, which depends upon V and gamma there right half rho half rho V square S times C D plus W sin gamma ok. So, this is a thrust required W sin gamma of course, so the power required or should be made available for this climb performance comma j should be equal to thrust required for this climb performance multiplied by the corresponding velocity of the flight forward velocity of flight ok. So, this is done. So, if it has to reach uh, an altitude of uh, say or say wherever it is going to take off it has to reach an altitude of uh, or say the cruise the, the cruise altitude and the takeoff altitude the difference between them should be 1 kilometer let us assume that. Then uh, the time taken to reach that altitude t of i comma j depend which depends upon again gamma uh, and flight path angle here. So, is equals to so let us say the difference should be 1000 we are fixing it here 1000 meters right multiplied upon velocity right. So, v of i comma j. So, here the time of flight here rate of climb is fixed right is not it and we have that vertical distance this vertical distance is fixed and rate of climb is fixed that means, this will not be a variable inside the loop inside the second loop there should be the variable in the first loop itself right. So, that means, so, here the time to climb for a particular rate of climb right with a particular rate of climb what will be the time that is required to the 
depends upon delta h delta h is a uh, uh, difference in the altitudes uh, the or say the final climb altitude and the altitude initial climb altitude the or the altitude at which the climb is initiated the delta h right upon rate of climb here r underscore c so this so it returns time here time for this uh, delta t to climb to that particular altitude so this delta t within this delta t what is the corresponding horizontal distance traveled so that depends upon gamma right so that is x here which we have discussed so x is equals to again this is a variable because it depends upon gamma x comma i comma j is equals to v infinity cos gamma that is v i comma g times cos of gamma times delta t times or t of j comma 1 right so when you fix the difference in the altitude the time required to climb that altitude and the rate of climb right so that means at for each and every iteration rate of climb is fixed for the outer loop right so and then del h is already fixed we want it to be right the altitude so it has to climb should be about 1000 meters right so so let me put the, put it down here so del underscore h is 1000 meters h2 minus h1 should be 1000 meters so for the each and every because del h is fixed that is from the mission requirements and then with different rate of climb you will have a different time taken to climb that uh, to climb to that particular altitude so within this time the horizontal distance covered is v cos gamma times t the respective t within that time and say if you want to find out the distance traveled along the flight path so say if you want if you want to find out the distance traveled along the flight path within that so along this direction within that delta t you have v infinity times so that's a velocity of flight and we assume it's a steady flight condition so it's pretty straightforward so v infinity times the corresponding time so i think uh, there is no, not much here so we can end this we have almost completed all the required yeah so we have computed all, all the required variables here so now let us plot here so what are we going to plot in the first figure so let me subplot first our major focus is on what should be the power required here right so power required and as well as thrust required and the velocity also let us see and the horizontal distance okay fine we will plot all these four variables here so let me take it four by one by one which talks about it's a so the in the figure you will have four columns four rows that is four uh, horizontal plots and one vertical plot right there is only one column the if you have four by two that means you'll have eight different plots now four by one you have only four plots so when you say four by two so in the first row you'll have four rows like sorry in the first column you have four rows in the second column you have four rows so sub subplot four one comma one this one talks about the first plot you are you are trying now you are trying to plot it in the first plot right for 1 comma 2 talks about like 4 comma 1 comma 2 talks about even you are plotting in the second plot second subplot of that figure okay what i need to plot is the following so i need to plot variation of gamma isn't it so gamma so is a any at at each and every rate of climb it is one and the same because the variation is 2 2 to 20 so i can plot any one of the column that should be good enough all the column variables so if i say one it stands for a particular rate of climb right so first column when r r by uh, when j is one here j is one column here represents all the rows here all the rows and first column that means gamma matrix for example you, i'll i'll show that very soon let me just okay so let, i'll just com, co, i just commented this i'll run this program and show you how the gamma matrix is so climb enter the altitude at which climb is initiated in meters right so i need to 
So, let us say from the data as soon as the aircraft takes off it has to climb that is what we have started this program is not it. So, in the question it is given uh, located the runway is located at an altitude of 1, kilo, one kilometer with respect to mean sea level. Okay. So, I need to consider density at that particular altitude for this particular problem or in general when you talk, talk about solving this in time domain you can also have density variation with altitude as well. right? Uh, so, this particular function returns you that particular uh, value of density at a altitude which is considered here as the altitude at which the run runway is located, located that is nothing but uh, the altitude at which climb is also initiated let us say 1000 meters. So, w should be small letter I guess right is not it. So, here w is in small uh, small case. So, now, so when it has executed till this point that means there are only two more lines for it to execute. So, you can assume the code is fine till that point. Okay. So, it is done right. So, if I take this out here aspect ratio is 2.8571 that we have uh, talked earlier 2.86 close to. So, and then C D again no it is varying inside the loop it is like 70 cross 7 is not it because there are gamma 10 values of gamma first let me show you what is uh, gamma here. So, the gamma here okay. so gamma here is on dog on dog gamma. So, see. there is some issue okay okay every time i is not getting zero here right i is increasing every time so let me just correct that okay so i'll just try to correct it so here after i plus 1 again once it comes here so after 10 it it will start 11 so instead of initializing this i is equals to zero here so let me initialize here so control v so if it for inner loop or for outer loop it has uh, no effect right whenever uh, the program completes this inner loop once it starts for the next uh, variable in the outer loop once it assigns the next rate of climb so this will also make the variable of that inner loop to zero it, that way it will help us to find out you know have the same uh, columns of like at the same size yeah. so this is uh, 1000 meters okay so for example now you can see so the first column corresponds to when rate of climb is 1 the second column is 2 when third column corresponds to rate of climb 3 fourth column corresponds to rate of climb 4 right when the rate of climb is 4 meters per second so first let us look at gamma here so gamma so gamma c here as I told you uh, it will be same for all the columns because we are varying effectively uh, fixing this vari variation is not it uh, through that uh, for loop command or the syntax that we have assigned in front for loop. So, we are actually uh, we have al uh, already fixed the initial and the final value as well as step size. So, this is in radians now if you can just multiply this with uh, 180 by pi you will get to know the degrees respect to degrees or say. Okay. So, I can what I can do is gamma times uh, 180 by pi 180 upon pi. So, this will help me see 2 degrees, 4 degrees, 6 degrees, 8 till 20 with a step size of 2 degrees. So, this is constant and it is same. So, for each and every rate of climb it starts again with 2 degrees, 4 degrees to 20 degrees. So, this uh, yeah. So, the gamma here uh, for uh, I can plot I can now plot. So, the uh, so now you will be more comfortable to appreciate this. So, considering any one of the gamma any one of the column in the gamma is good enough for me to uh, like uh, plot the variation of uh, any other variable with respect to gamma right. So, now so each and every column corresponds to a particular rate of climb and if you can see see here rate of climb is just varying from 1 to 7 right. So, if I just either I can look it from the workspace or I can just write it down here yeah, right uh, rate of climb is varying from 1 to 7. So, I wish uh, I may not 
okay i will plot for only one figure so you 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 try to plot it for the rest okay so let me take subplot 4 comma 1 comma 1 okay gamma and then what is what am i plotting it for you can use either for loop i am making it explicit here so gamma and then uh, rate of uh, so gamma i need to plot for power required right P power required for climb here pr oh, pr for climb power required for climb which is column comma 1 right the first column power required and then i have colon k star k stands for black color star stands for the corresponding marker at that particular gamma ka, i comma j comma power required i comma j so that particular point is now represented by this marker star k stands for color code which is black i am using and co this colon stands for the line type you know line type what, which you can mention you know, explicitly for each and every variable i would like to use the shortcut here so in the same plot i want to pl i want to plot for the rest of uh, uh, rate of climb as well so say plot for gamma 1 comma because whether, whether you take first column or second column in gamma it is one and the same so i am not varying it so so i have taken the second variable and instead of green uh, k I, I have taken red here right so the second talks about rate of climb 2 right isn't it the second uh, value here uh, or say the second column it talks about rate of climb when the rate of climb is 2 meters per second so i will hold on hold on this plot so that i can superimpose this so the third column when rate of climb is 3 so say instead of i will say green So hold on, so I will say instead of, uh, yeah, now I am plotting it for rate of climb 4 which corresponds to column 4 here, right, the data here. So instead of uh, blue, I will take blue, blue and star and then control V. So instead of, uh, yeah, now I am, I am plotting it for when rate of climb is 5 meters per second and yeah, M stands for magenta here. Okay, you can. So rate of climb six. So this will. So uh, end all the like plots, right? I I'm no more uh, holding it on this particular. I'll say, uh, or say in after y label and x label i'm just copying it just to save a few seconds so power required that is what we are talking about power required in the cl climb right so this is the power required directly by the system isn't it so can we also divide this by uh, or say this uh, this is power required by the system so what should be the shaft power available ps for climb performance ps underscore cl let us say for climb should be what i comma j should be power required for climb upon efficiency efficiency of propeller which is given here eff underscore p right so instead of writing you know pr uh, cl i would like to use ps cl here okay so okay. and now this is like in watts yes of course in watts power required during climb v l i m v right power required during climb so instead of uh, this okay you can repeat this for so i'll just plot any of the two variables right so i'll just plot what is the forward velocity as well as oh, i'm sorry so i'll just plot two subplots you can repeat this exercise so 
in the second one instead of uh, p s what I would like to plot is uh, the velocity right what will be the corresponding forward velocity of flight ok. So, that sounds help me to identify that it has completed the uh, replace, replacement of that variables from the point where I have selected till the end of the code right. It will again go to the uh, go, go to the top of the code and start searching for that variable. So, this is in velocity which is in forward flight velocity v underscore backslash inf t infinity or inf what is that infinity what is x plus v infinity ok inf t let us see meters per second ok. I am just plotting for this too and uh, let us see the result. So, here it is not i comma 1 it is i comma j. So, let us run this code again with that. So, so the altitude at which we are initiating this climb is 1 kilometer with respect to mean sea level and we want this to climb to an altitude of 1 kilometer from there. So, you can notice so infinity uh, backslash infinity stands for v infinity here. So, x label here. gamma in degrees. So, I am plotting here in radians right. So, let me just uh, correct this multiply this by say if I multiply this by pi by 180 uh, sorry 180 by pi I will convert this in degrees right. So, replace 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So, done. I will run this again and see that is how the proper output ok. So, this there is there is something here uh, the symbol did not appear I will just check it. So, the power required during shaft power required during climb is in watts here. So, when it is 2 degrees. So, yeah to have the same uh, what you call rate of climb. So, for we have we need to have the label here. So, legend you can insert legend yeah legend has come. So, the black one corresponds to rate of climb 1. So, red red plot corresponds to rate of climb 2 right and then this is rate of seventh one corresponds to rate of climb 7 at 7 meters per second ok. So, here you can notice no as the rate of climb increases with a lesser climb angle you need to uh, because the distance is fixed and the rate of climb is fixed you need to uh, fly at a very high speed that is why the to overall power requirement during this uh, is about uh, say uh, 1000 1, no it is uh, 10000 watts which is like uh, 10 kilowatts kind of right. So, similarly what will be the corresponding flight velocity is 200 meters per second if you want to achieve rate of climb of 7 uh, with the 2 degrees of climb angle and it drastically decreases you can see when rate of climb is 7. So, it has to be just 20 meters per second right the forward velocity and the uh, power required. So, so maybe the scale is quite big right here it is 10 power 4 it is approximately. So, you require about 392 watts right that means if you take a 12 cell bat uh, or a 6 cell battery, 6 cell battery what is the power uh, 6 times 3.2 let us say approximately 18 uh, 6, 3.7 approximately each LiPo uh, battery can is of approximately 3.7 volts into 6 is like 22 volts right. So, when you want to supply this much power of say about 392 or 393 uh, is the power upon 22 volts let us say you need to supply an amperes of about 8 it takes about 18 amperes. No? So, the motor draws 18 amperes again you have to divide it by efficiency factor. So, that you will get to know what should be the battery uh, capacity from there how much time you require you know what is delta t. So, multiplying that with delta t you know what is the battery weight required for that particular flight envelope ok. So, hope uh, you will extend this program with the 
other variables as well like how the drag is varying and then the CL is varying right uh, with gamma and for different climb rates here right. So, okay thank you and in the next lecture we, are go we will be talking about uh, yeah in the next lecture we, we will be talking about weight estimation subroutine. So, once we are done with the weight estimation subroutine we will proceed to find out uh, how to like uh, plan form geometry selection uh, as well as profile selection wing, wing selection ideally. So, wing, wing design uh, subroutine thank you.